So there's something else I want to show you. I'm pretty sure he's a male. Boom, man, it is gone. I was just thinking, let me show you guys the predator tank. Right here, you can see the waterfall. Oh, Zeus, 40, 50 feet high. Uh, poor guy, he took a little bit of a... Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy, the Hawaiian fish keeper. And I was anticipating doing this video, but also dreading at the same time. Tis the season where it's getting pretty chilly here in Sacramento, Northern California. It gets super cold out here. Just because we say California doesn't mean that it's all like beautiful 70 degree weather all year round. Oh no, not here. Check out the degrees. We actually hit our first cold front of the season. See? low 40s even low 30s now i've said this in previous videos a while ago about how cold it gets here during the cold winter season so we got to prep tiki falls we got to prep the outdoor water feature i'm going to show you guys how to prep your diy ponds to get ready for that cold season now one of the most popular questions that i do get asked about tiki falls is do i have a heater in tiki falls i do not have a heater because i do not have tropical fish that are in tiki falls i have koi and goldfish just so you know koi can withstand super cold water like freezing degree temperatures and so can common goldfish and shibukin goldfish uh right here is a common goldfish right there the goldfish with the little red dot on its head and then here's a shibukin goldfish right here they can withstand also really cold weather now the goldfish that i do worry about are my Oranda, which is the big red cap Oranda right there. There's another one right there. And then also the butterfly telescope, which is right there. Those are considered specialty goldfish or fancy goldfish. So those I do tend to worry about when it comes to the cold, cold season. So as long as I keep this really healthy during the winter season, they actually make it through and there have been no signs of ick no signs of disease so tiki falls is really on point it really is as much as i say it i'm not bragging about it but it just is you know i take care of this pond i do water changes as you can see the water level has dropped i don't know if you can tell with by the video but maybe from this fall over here you can i actually dropped the water i put a submersible pump in here i pumped out a good like uh, maybe 300 gallons of water I run the hose and I just run it into my plants over here, okay? So you can see the water level is super low. As you can see right there, you can see the water line that goes all the way around. It's normally a lot higher. That shelf right here is usually underwater. So what we're going to do is do a big water change. I'm gonna fill this bad boy up. So there's something else I wanna show you guys. Check it out. So as you can see on the ground here, it's just leaves falling everywhere. As you can see in the new pond, we have leaves that have fallen down from this huge tree that I have in my backyard. You see all those leaves? Yeah, this tree is, gosh, I don't know. It's about 40, 50 feet high. Anyways, this tree in the wintertime becomes completely bare. So all those leaves fall to the ground, which leads into the pond, which we gotta actually cover it and prep this for the fall slash winter season. You see these sunshade cells that protects the whole pond and whatnot from the sun during summertime? We're gonna actually take these down, which is really easy to do. Let me show you. These are all on carabiner clips. So I'm basically gonna unclip it here and we're gonna roll them up. You can see I have my, uh, trusty ladder here that I got to climb up detach those up top there you can see the carabiner clips like I said really easy to put up and take down so we're gonna go ahead and take these guys down in one two three boom and it is gone we are sunshade sail free gosh it looks different it's all open I'm so used to seeing it all enclosed and shade just because of uh, the whole summer season but you can see I had the ladder right up in there in the tree you can see the carabiner clip i just unclipped it really easy to put back on when i'm ready to do it next summer as you can see they are right here all rolled up pretty neat pretty easy i'll put them away for the season bring them back next summer to put up so this is tiki falls without the sunshade sail look at the sunlight just gleaming in it looks so nice gosh i forget what it looks like with the direct sunlight on there but anyways, you can see the water is super low right here. You can see the waterfall. So we're gonna fill this bad boy up. I actually did a nice clean out. 
in the inside. I had a bunch of leaves, debris, you know, old pond gunk stuck in there. We shot it all out, cleaned it out. I actually just picked it up, tipped it on its side because I'm Shaq Diesel like that. Boom, shaka -laka -laka. So it's looking nice and clean. I'll probably get a cover to cover it so no more debris falls down inside it. Also, I really appreciate all the comments and ideas on what to stock this beautiful above the ground pond with. I do have some ideas, guys, so stay tuned. Okay, so check it. YouTube's analytics is showing me that more than half of you guys that watch my videos are not even subscribed. Check it out. 26%? That's weak. Come on, guys. We can get it to 30%. That's not asking for much, right? All you have to do is click on that subscribe button. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Click on that bell. It's a notification bell. Just going to notify you when I upload a video, and it doesn't cost a thing. And then you're part of my Ohana. And for those of you guys that are already subscribed and part of the Ohana, I really appreciate it much mahalos all right so we're in the house right now I had to feed the boys some lunch while I was in here I was just thinking let me show you guys the predator tank for those of you that are new to the channel this is my predator tank which houses my Ocellaris peacock bass Zeus not only that though it has a couple more predator fish in here and you guys named my red Severum that I have in here too as well that I haven't even told you guys the name that I chose now you guys named him many videos ago and I went with one a lot of you guys participated and I really appreciate it you guys had some really great names it was hard to pick one but this one stood out big shout out to Patrick Roberts I really appreciate the name and let's go check out the fish so everybody here in the predator tank is doing good look at oh Zeus my Ocellaris peacock bass he's looking great and you know I want to give a shout out to everybody who left comments on picking out a, get out of the way bud picking out a name for uh, my red Severum uh, you know I loved them all they were so good a lot of them were unique and uh, I end, ended up choosing Redbone. <laughs> a big shout out to the Ohana. Thank you guys for participating and naming this beautiful Red Severum Redbone. We got my Red Tiger Motoquence in the back. He's doing great. You can see him. He's kind of lurking. Anyways, uh, let me get the side angle of him. He's beautiful, man. His colors, his stripes are coming in really nice. I'm not an expert on Red Tiger Motoquence, but I'm pretty sure he's a male. So we'll keep an eye on him. I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, in the back there, yes, Tupac, the Jack Dempsey. He's doing good too as well. And Jason Voorhees, look at, uh, poor guy, he took a little bit of a, a beating on the forehead there. This is my uh, green terror, Jason Voorhees. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, look at that, Ugh, a little scuff. I got some plans for him. It's fascinating watching these guys interact. But anyways, the Predator tank is doing great, as you can see. Oh, yes, we did a big water change for them yesterday. Uh, yeah, well, just a quick update with these guys. All right, as you can see, Tiki Falls is getting filled up. It's actually just about at the uh, right height. Now, the product that I do use, especially when I'm doing a huge water change, is maintained for ponds by aquascape i shared this product with you guys in a couple other videos this stuff is excellent not only does it take care of all the chlorine and chloramines out of your tap water but it also makes your water crystal clear and adds a little bit of beneficial bacteria to your pond so this here is really good because it's one squirt per 100 gallons now i added about 400 gallons worth which is only four pumps it makes it really easy and convenient now speaking of beneficial bacteria let me show you guys another secret potion that i add to tiki falls look at by aquascape it is called cold water beneficial bacteria now you add this to your pond when your water temperature is under 50 degrees now the temperature right now with tiki falls is about 40 degrees high 30s right now so we're going to go ahead and pump in another maybe about four pumps each pump is equivalent to 100 gallons so it makes it really easy to measure out so let's go ahead and pump in some cold water beneficial bacteria which will survive and keep your pond healthy during the winter season if you live in really cold regions here in the united states or anywhere in the world get yourself some cold water beneficial bacteria by aquascape guys you won't be disappointed this stuff is excellent okay so here's the checklist i just have five simple checks all right one huge water change on tiki falls two we added the maintain for ponds and three we added the cold water beneficial bacteria for tiki falls by aquascape four we took down the sunshade cells we rolled them up and they'll be ready for next season when the summer hits and then five 
Boom! This is number five, the bird and pond netting. This is gonna protect our pond during the winter season, especially during the fall season when all those leaves fall down, they are not going in the pond. Now that we have our pond net, I'm gonna show you guys a quick, easy, and inexpensive way how to install this. We gotta head over to Home Depot, grab a couple items. Let's go. And just like that, we're at Home Depot. We are in the cinder block aisle and they have a bunch of rebar and steel stakes. So let me grab one of these for $3.55 and let's head back home and I'll show you what we need it for. Okay, so I have a three quarter inch PVC pipe in my vise here, my little work desk here. Anyways, I wanted to show you what I did to the end of this. You see these little ridges that I cut? I'm gonna show you why and how I cut these little ridges. So let's go ahead and make, uh, I don't know, one more ridge right here, okay? I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. You wanna get yourself one of these little Dremels. They're really inexpensive. I got this at Walmart, like where all the tools are. I got this little cutting blade on it, right? And we're just gonna cut a little slit right in this bad boy here, watch this. All the way down, makes it really easy. And we'll cut it right here. There we go, pretty easy, right? Just a little notch. And I'm gonna show you the reason why we do this. Let's go. Now, I already had these at home, so I didn't need to buy them, but these are um, suitable for five pounds that you can hang off these hooks that you can just manually twist into the fence. Let me show you where I put them. Now you can see, I put one right here and then one right there, one further down, way over there, but it's a little bit down. And then there's one more hook down there on that two by four. So as you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a pattern. It starts up high and then it goes down low and it slopes low. Then as we move down this way, I have one more here, okay? So let me show you what these hooks are going to do. So let's go ahead and grab our pond netting. And just so you know, this pond netting is 14 feet wide by 45 feet long. The squares are super small. Here, I'll put it next to my hand, all right? And smaller leaves may fit through these little squares. We're gonna set it up like a tent. Let me show you. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see it because the net is so fine, but we do have the pond completely covered. Now, I have, I don't know if you can even see this. Here we go. You can actually see the netting hooked in the little hooks all the way down flush against the fence. I got it stretched out right over here. You can kind of see it. It's stretched out. It goes all the way over the waterfall there. So we have enough, you know, width-wise, and we also have enough length-wise. Now we're gonna grab our PVC pipe and our like steel stake that we got at Home Depot and hammer it right in over there. So we're gonna come on the complete opposite side of the pond, kind of dead middle, okay? Right here. Got our trusty trusty hammer here. And we're gonna bang this about halfway down into the ground. There you go. All right, so let's grab our PVC pipe. So this three quarter inch just slides right over the stake. Now this is where the little ridges here are gonna come into effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the net. It's actually pretty good, right about there. You can see these little ridges, the net will actually go down in there and it holds it in place. So it's not gonna go anywhere. You see that? That's why we made these little ridges. So I can lift it up, pull it to a, des a desired height and tension, and then just put it over it. It just locks it into place. It's not gonna go anywhere. And this PVC pipe ain't going anywhere because it is drilled down with that metal or steel stake into the ground. So now on this side, of the pond it'll keep your netting up all the way and match that other side so when leaves hit it'll actually fall down and slope away from the pond instead of just sitting and accumulating on top of the net it's almost like a tent you know like a triangle so the triangle starts there it goes down triangle starts there and it goes down same here with this side so the net will actually pull down to the side here we're gonna grab this end and pull it down and then we're just gonna anchor the bottom down here with some rocks. All right, so it is done 
And you know, looking at it from afar, it's not that big of a deal, like a sight for sore eyes, you know? As you get closer, you can actually see the netting. You can see the grid. Now these are the types of leaves and branches that fall from that big tree right there. This right here isn't exactly leaf proof, but right there it is stopping the leaves and branches from falling in the pond now you can see the netting goes all the way down here and covers it and then i have some rocks uh that are just on top of it just to keep it pinned down so when leaves do hit they'll roll off to the side and hopefully uh this fall i don't have to skim as many leaves as i used to let me grab this oh get that off there not only did we do this with the 45 by 14 um pond net that we bought but check it out right behind me we also had enough netting for aunt kelly's pond so you can see we got it netted all the way around and how i did this was pretty simple we just used those hooks we hooked them all around the side of the pond i think we put three on each side two three yep so we did a total of 12 hooks and um all you do is just pull it down and hook it in real simple you know pull the tension on what you need this is pretty look at it's pretty tight now these will probably just fall on top and then blow off you know but they're not going to land inside the pond and we already cleaned everything in here so yeah we're good to go hung it over a little bit and not only did we have enough netting to do tiki falls aunt kelly's pond but also boom and the outdoor water feature guys so we actually got a three for the price of one now this netting i spent twenty dollars on ebay you can see the whole grid i actually have more than i actually need so i'm gonna have to trim this up too as well but it covers the whole outdoor water feature and i don't have to worry about the leaves because this actually gets a lot of leaves that fall inside this from this tree here so as you can see, plenty of leaves, they hang right above my head and right below is the water feature. So great deal, $20, three ponds. Aloha, my ohana, it is the next day. I wanted to show you what Tiki Falls looks like. You can hardly even see the net. I mean, if you look really good, you can see the net, but as far as like from the house, you can't see it at all. So it's not a sight for sore eyes, it's all covered. But most importantly, look at it. There are no leaves. There's normally leaves floating in the pond. You can see both sides. All the fish are on this side right now, but for the most part though, there are no leaves. The only thing that I would say is that's a sight for sore eyes is the PVC pipe. It came out pretty good. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this little DIY netting project, right? And the cool thing about these little like, you know, squares or the grid, I should say, in the net is we can actually steal feed the fish grab your fish food like this and look at you can sprinkle it right in through it goes right through the net and there they are eating away pretty neat right i hope you guys enjoyed this little diy project that i put together now don't forget this pond netting now is not just made for leaves and sticks that fall down in fall it also protects your pond during the winter season for birds of prey as you can see right up here my neighbor's house yeah birds of prey can use that as a perch and look right down into my pond if you ever seen a bird that try to land on a pond with a net covering it they freak out and they fly away and they never come back again so there's two reasons why you should actually put a net over your pond also i need you guys to comment down below okay comment down below to let me know if you think the Los Angeles Rams are gonna win the Super Bowl this year, that would be three LA sports teams winning a world championship. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I thought you would agree with that. Other than that, give this video a big like. Love you guys, I'll see you on the next video. Much love and aloha.